Hello, this is the System Slayer, and welcome to episode 3 of the GitLab CI series. In this episode, we will start working on our continuous integration configuration file, also known as the GitLab CI YAML file. We will be setting up a simple pipeline that will be useful for validating development branches through our continuous integration checks. By the end of this video, you will have learned to create a GitLab CI configuration file that will trigger a pipeline automatically whenever you make any changes to any development branch. This episode will serve as a primer for the next episode, in which we will create a more elaborate continuous integration configuration. In order to configure continuous integration for a project, we first need the project itself. I have created a very simple Python project that basically checks if the Google website is available. We will use this project for the purposes of this video. A link to the repository that holds all the code you will see in this episode is available in the description so that you may try all the things you will learn here on your own GitLab account. It is important to note that, although this project is somewhat of a toy project, the concepts you will learn here will apply to complex projects as well. Let's quickly run through the code to highlight a few key points. First, the requirements file. The requirements file lists our project dependencies. As you can see, our only dependency is the request package, which is what we will use to check if Google is available. Project dependencies are important to consider when configuring continuous integration, as you want to make sure that your pipelines pick up any changes to any project dependencies. Next, the main module. As you can see, nothing too interesting is happening here. We are simply checking if Google is available once every five seconds. Our main module depends on the web utils module, which defines the function used to determine whether a web address is available or not. This is the part of the project that is covered by the unit test. Next, our unit test. It is not very important to talk about the implementation of the test for the purposes of this episode. The important thing is that we do have some tests. Proper test suites allow us to confidently say that our code is behaving correctly. This simple test suite is what will be executed in our CI pipeline. I know this sample code doesn't look like much, but imagine working on a very large project with thousands of lines of code. It could be the case that what you thought was a small change to the code base actually ends up breaking some functionality in another part of the application. Assuming the project has proper test suites, continuous integration would automatically pick up on the fact that a part of the application is not working correctly anymore. This is a huge benefit of continuous integration and proper test suites. Lastly, as our pipeline jobs will be executed in a Docker runner, let's quickly take a look over the Docker components of the project as they will play a large role within our GitLab CI file. A thorough explanation of Docker concepts is out of the scope of this episode, but in a nutshell, and as explained in the previous episode, we can create many Docker containers out of a single Docker image. For the purposes of this video, all you need to know is that the Docker image itself comes from something known as a Docker file. Here we see our Docker file, which will create an image that contains Python 3.7 in its environment, and it also ensures that the environment has our project dependencies installed. This is an important part of the build stage of CI pipeline. Making sure that our Docker file has the step that installs our dependencies ensures that our CI checks will always run against the latest updates to the project dependencies themselves. Lastly, let's quickly go over the Docker compose file. This file ensures that an image is created from the Docker file we just looked at. As you can see, we have a CI series service defined. This means that this file would create a container out of the image we just mentioned, and that container would have CI series as part of its name. The main thing to take away here is that our application runs under a service named CI series, which has Python 3.7 in its environment, along with all our project dependencies. This will be important when setting up the GitLab CI YAML file. This Docker Compose file is set up to start the main module of our application through the command definition. Note that we will not have to change this in order to run our tests. This means that you can use your production-ready Docker Compose file in order to configure GitLab CI without making any changes to your production-ready Docker Compose file. The image section of this file basically looks for an environment variable named Compose Tag, and it will use its value to tag the image that is created from the Docker file. If this variable is not available, it will default to CI series local. This is not very important for the purposes of this episode, but it will be important in the next episode where we will configure a much more complex pipeline. 
the rest of this file basically ensures that our project code is available within the CI series service container. We now have a good understanding of the sample project and we are ready to tackle the GitLab CI YAML file which is the file that will be used to configure GitLab continuous integration. I have already created this file for time purposes, but I will go ahead and explain every part of what you see here. First, let's talk about the file name itself. The file name must be as you see here, which is .gitlab-ci.yml. It is very important that you include the dot at the beginning of the file name, otherwise GitLab will not read your GitLab CI configuration and no pipelines will be triggered. Okay. Now let's get into the contents of the file. I have included a few reference links at the top of the file, which are nice to have in case you need to look up something quickly. The first important part of the file is the stages definition. This section defines which pipeline stages are used by this configuration file. If you remember from the first episode of this series, the three pipeline stages are build, test, and deploy. As you can see, you don't need to use all three stages if you don't want to. This configuration file only leverages the test stage. We will get more into the reasoning behind this in a second. Below the stages definition, we have our first job definition, which is named Docker Development Test. Everything indented under this line essentially defines the configuration for this particular job. The first thing we see is the accept definition. What this line says is, run this job whenever there is a change to any branch except the master branch. To be clear, simply making changes to the project files in your local machine will not trigger this job. You must push the changes to gitlab.com. The advantage of having a job like this is that your CI checks will automatically trigger as you push changes to development branches on gitlab.com, and these CI checks will let you know that the changes you have made so far are sound and have not caused issues anywhere else in the project. Next, we have the image definition. As mentioned in the previous episode, pipeline jobs themselves run within a Docker container when using the Docker executor. This line says, Hey GitLab, please run this job within a container that is created from T. Meyer's Docker Compose image. Next, we have the services section. This section defines other Docker services that will be available while our job container is running. The reason we list Docker DIND here is to make sure that the Docker daemon, that is the Docker background process that listens for connections, is started and available. Next, we have the stage section. This section denotes the stage for the job. As you can see, this job is defined as a test stage job. Next, we see sections related to the script of the job. The script section defines the actual work to be done by the job. If the script completes successfully, then the job is considered a success. If the script is not successful, then the job is considered a failure. If there is any setup to be done, we can use the before script definition to outline setup work. If there is any cleanup work to be done, we can define an after script section to perform necessary cleanup. An after script section is not necessary for this particular job. Let's take a quick look at the main script definition. If you notice, we are invoking the docker compose run command, and we are passing it the name of our CI series service. Everything after CI series is a command that should be executed within the CI series environment. Basically, this command says the following. Hey Docker Compose, please start up the CI series service environment, and once the environment is ready, please use it to execute the command python-m unit test discover s dot slash tests. As you can probably tell by now, you can replace the python command that will be executed within the container to anything you'd like. This means that you can follow this pattern to invoke the test of any type of project within a service environment that is defined in the project's docker compose file. You may be wondering why we are choosing to build our image in the before script section of this job. This seems like something that should be done in a separate job that is defined for the build stage of our pipeline, right? Since this job is meant for testing commits to development branches, we are combining both the build and test steps into a single job to save time. Normally, your build stage would build your Docker image and also store it as an artifact that would be used by other pipeline jobs. Since this job will test only development code, and since our development branches will likely change very frequently, we do not need to save the image as an artifact. Saving the results of the build stage is something that is done for more important branches, like the master branch. All of this will become clear in the next episode, where we will configure a more complex pipeline for our master branch. Okay. Now that we understand our GitLab CI YAML file, let's actually see it in action. Let's go to our project in GitLab and let's open up the CI CD pipeline section. 
This page will list all the pipelines that are automatically triggered when new commits are pushed to GitLab.com. With this page open, let's make sure we are not on the master branch and then make a new commit. It doesn't matter what we change as long as we are on any branch that is not the master branch. Any new commit will trigger our pipeline. Let's just make a quick change to the readme file and then push the changes to GitLab. On GitLab.com, we should now see a new entry in the pipelines page. If we click on the status, we are taken to a new page where we can see the jobs running for our test stage. If we then click on the job itself, we can see the job running in real time. Here we can see our jobs container spinning up, the dependencies being installed, and we will be able to see that our tests get executed and that they pass. If we go back to the CICD pipelines page, we will see that the test stage of our pipeline, the only stage in this case, has successfully passed. Good to go. We now have a configuration that will trigger a pipeline when there are changes to any branch that is not the master branch, so basically any development branch. In the next episode, we will enhance our CI configuration. We will configure a more complex pipeline for our master branch. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Your feedback is highly appreciated as well, so please leave a comment below. See you next time. Slayer out.